Let's see. <laughs> the <laughs> numbers are rolling. <laughs> Uh, you, 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 <laughs> self-theists, some of you guys are just, just <laughs> laughable, just laughable. Um, yesterday, uh, the video that was done yesterday, um, I, I, I was online too when this happened, um, the video hadn't been up for maybe not even... 15 minutes and there there's one dude this older looking guy I, I have to be careful with that because I'm going to be Lord willing 50 this year myself uh, yeah I, I am by the way some of you have apparently you know you're not going to be f yes I am yes I am okay but look at the, the turkey neck okay <laughs> uh, but anyway anyway Yesterday, like I said, the video from yesterday hadn't been up not even 15 minutes. And this, this guy <laughs> left this 10-page dissertation on, uh, in the comment section, bringing up all these stupid things that you <laughs> atheists like to bring up. Uh, and hey, old man, I say that sparingly because I'm going to be 50. Are you looking at me? Shut your mouth, watch the video, and check the description box of the previous video. You brought up giants. I, I went to your channel. I blocked you. See, when you, when a video is up not even 15 minutes and you drop a 10-page dissertation like you did, you crazy nitwit with your little clown emojis, okay, um... You have no interest in hearing truth. You are here, you were there just to be disputatious. Okay? I don't need to answer anything you ask because, number one, you don't want to hear it. And go ahead and play the little, uh, like the King James Bible believing Christians do. Go play your little schoolboy games, old man. You ought to know better, but then again, uh, you're an old and foolish king who will <laughs> no longer be admonished. Okay? Uh, that'll be in the description box for you. So go ahead and play your little schoolyard games. Well, you can't answer them. Nah, 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 nah. Why don't you grow up? Why don't you grow up? That, that, you know, from people who claim to be so brilliant and progressive, stupid idiot. And, uh, by the way, brethren, yeah, you're going to see uh, mean Brad today. Um, how childish you guys act. Really, really. You, you know, you... you be, you know, you guys are a piece of work. And again, <laughs> listen. Okay, listen. All right, listen. You're not an atheist. You're a self-theist. Okay? Because what what you atheists do, <laughs> this is, <laughs> it's so stupid. You guys say that you don't believe in God, right? Right? And some of you say, well, I don't believe in the devil. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Uh, I'm not going to say his name. Uh, <laughs> it's just one vulgar, belligerent, so-called satanic. <laughs> satanic atheist. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's like a Christian atheist that just... Oh, <laughs> stupid. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but what's your standard then? It's you. You are your own standard. You are your own God. Okay, I don't think I'm God. What's your standard for judging? Yourself. Your feelings. Your emotions. Hence... When you are your own standard, you are of your father, the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning, because he abode not in the truth, and there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, from himself. Ye shall be as gods. Okay? All right? I don't care who you is, okay? I beg, beg your pardon for a second. got to adjust this. There we go. I don't care who you are. Uh, you come around claiming you're an atheist 
and you, I, I'm gonna get on you about that. You, I, I'd say this to, I don't care who you are. I don't care what m branch of the military you've been in. I don't care who you are. Any atheist you are, I would look you in your face, 12 inches from your face, and call you a stinking rotten liar. You are your own God. You are your own standard. Okay? All right? Now, to this old man, and I use that sparingly, because I'm, Lord willing, going to be 50 this year. Okay? But to you crazy old coot who left that tent pay, and I, like I said, that video wasn't even up 15 minutes. And you drop a comment like that, you have no interest in hearing anything. Okay, you just want to show off and think that you know something. You don't know anything. Okay? But hey, old man, you looking at me? You want to hear the answer to you, one of your questions? Because hey, what you do is in the uh, search section, if you're on a computer, you can't do this on a health phone or a, 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 what do you call it, a tablet yet. But, you know, you go to the thing with the little magnifying glass and put an atheist and go to town and there will be a lot of videos there for you to consider. Okay? But there was one thing that this crazy old coot yesterday brought up that I have not addressed before. And I'm going to address this today, Lord willing. Hey! Hey, look at me. You want to hear the answer? Huh? Hey, you want to contact me? I ain't got time for your stupidity. But hey, if you want to contact me, there are emails there. You use profanity or something like that and threaten me in an email, I will publicly uh, denounce, I will uh, expose you publicly and uh, put your email out there for everyone to see, okay? Just to warn you, all right? Just to warn you. You want to talk? Get a hold of me through an email. But when it comes here to uh, YouTube kind of stuff, I ain't got time for your stupidity. Okay? But hey, do you want to hear the answer to one of your questions? First of all, Proverbs 18, verses 12 and 13. Okay? Uh, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. The authorized version, the King James Version, is my standard for judging myself and you. I'm a fruit inspector because the scripture, which I judge myself and you, tells me to be a fruit inspector. Okay? This is my standard. This is the perfect standard. The inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God. Perfect. Flawless. Oh, you can find out contradiction. Uh, that's because, number one, you're not saved. Number two, you want to find contradiction. And number three, you have no idea what rightly dividing the word of truth is. Which is, again, which, again, rightly dividing the word of truth <laughs> settles a majority of these contradictions and stuff like that. Okay? They do. They do. That's why do you think Christianity wants nothing to do with it? Okay? But today, we're going to look into this question, which is actually a common thing that self-theists... See, when you call yourself a, an atheist, you are actually a Satanist. If you're a Satanist, you should be a Catholic. Okay? But, you want to hear the answer? Or do you just want to spout off at the mouth? You think you know something, huh? Proverbs 18, verses 12 on to verse 13. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. And before honor is humility. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Like that old coot. The video wasn't even up 15 minutes. And it was a near two hour video. And then he drops this huge thing using clown emojis. I, I thought for a moment it was the bloke. But I, no, no, the bloke didn't. Wouldn't. Bloke knows better than to do 
stupid stuff like that, even though he does stupid stuff, okay? But, and then I saw your ugly face on the channel. Hey, hey, I can say that because look at my ugly face, okay? So, you're answering a matter before you even gave it any consideration. Let's look at verses 1 on to verse 7 now in the same proverb. Through desire, what kind of desire? To magnify yourself that ye shall be as gods. You will exalt your throne above the stars of God. You shall be like the Most High. Through desire, a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. There are two wisdoms. And see, th this, this is what you self-theists self -theists, um, don't like to acknowledge. It's either or. You're either saved or lost. There is no shade of gray. When you, as a self-theist, say, I don't believe in God or I don't believe in the devil, but you believe in yourself, you are your own standard of judgment, hence you are of your father the devil. See, there's no shade of gray here. Gray here. It's either or. But see right here, through desire to justify yourself, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. All wisdom. There's only two wisdoms. There is the wisdom that comes from the Lord, and there is a wisdom that comes from this, which is earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? There's only two wisdoms. But see, all wisdom, you read the Tao, or about the Tao, uh, Confucius stuff like that, uh, Bishido and stuff like that. You meddle with uh, Hinduism, Islam. Um, uh, various flavors of Christianity and all these other relations. You're a whore! Through desire? Yeah, you heard what I said. Yeah, you're a whore! Oh, I told you. You're going to see me and Brad here, but I'm telling you like it is, buddy. It's either or. There is no option C. There is no gray area. And see, Catholicism tries to interject this gray option C thing. Purgatory. <laughs> Stupid. 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 You don't go to heaven, you don't go to hell, but you go to purgatory and burn for a couple thousand millennia until you can get your mind and think. <laughs> How stupid. But see, mankind has been conditioned by the very whore herself, Roman Catholicism. And see, when you, you <laughs> progressive, self-theist, like to take in, I, I consider everything, you're a whore. Take offense and gate. Go ahead. Somebody got to tell you like it is. Come on, guys. Let's let's let, let's be honest with you. you know. I've encountered atheists who at least, at least, have the fortitude to openly admit that fact. And it's like fine. I, I ain't gonna bother with you. I'm not gonna. It's like uh, you know, Mr. Murphy and that um, uh, whatever her name was. I'm not gonna waste my time with people like that. They've made themselves clear. They express. I don't believe what you're. Shoveling, but yeah, sure. Yeah, I want my sin. Hey, if you can at least have the fortitude to admit that, I'll give you some respect for that. It's like, okay, fine. I'm not going to waste my time with you. Okay? I'm not going to waste my time with you. Okay? There are other fish in the sea that need to hear this. You've heard it. You reject it. You want it yourself. Go along. Roll up another one. Okay? Okay? And that's sad, but it happens. But see, when you intermeddleth with all wisdom, okay, that's whoredom. 
You're a whore. Okay? It is, there's a difference between having been saved and researching stuff to expose it. That's different. When you guys want to incorporate everything into one thing yourself and become like a mishmash, garbled, whatever. Verse 2, a fool. Who's, the fool says in his heart there is no God. A fool hath no delight in understanding, departing from evil. But that his heart may discover itself. Oh, when you get your heart involved. I feel in my heart, God knows my heart, in my heart, I love this, that, and the other thing, and you're talking about another man, or you're talking about another woman, you being a female, or whatever. In, this, in the name of this worldly, grotesque, whorish love, uh, y'all can justify pretty much anything, including the celebration of Roman Catholic holidays. You know, bright King James Bible believing Christian. All right. When the wicked cometh, then cometh also contempt, and with ignominy reproach. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters. They sound good, don't they? And the wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked. Hey, you uh, horish. Live streamers. There are, there's a brother of ours who, who does live streaming. Um, one brother that I, who I believe is a brother. I don't, he knows how I feel about it. He's going to do, fine. That's, you know, I love him. I do. I, I, if you see this brother, I love you. I wish you and I could get along. I do. I think it would be beneficial for both of us if you and I could get along. We can't down here. When we're up there, we will. That, that, that's fine. Okay? God bless you, brother. But, you know, with these guys who have these live streams, they call themselves Christians, and they take on all these other people, all these other contrary things, and want to have strife. And Come on, guys. But hey, that's what they do. That's what they do. And some of them, some of them I respect, uh, like the, the Mr. Sunken Eye from Canada. I wish that guy was our brother. I really do. I really do. Because even the stuff he does is engaging. You know, it is. I mean, it is. I, I, I could, if I chose, and I don't, but I could listen to the guy. You know, you know, just kind of background noise. What he's he's not my brother. Wish he was. But anyway, it's not good to accept the person of the wicked. And when you're doing these things where you have people come into the chat and what blah 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 blah, what do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing? What they're your brother because they say they are. To overthrow the righteous in judgment. To overthrow the righteous in judgment. Come out from amongst them and be ye separate. Overthrowing the righteous in judgment. Whose judgment? Your judgment. Your judgment. Okay? You're judging what is wicked to be right in order for you to spread your legs and let everyone come in onto you. A fool's lips fool says in his heart, there is no God. Enter into contention. <laughs> and his mouth calleth for strokes. A fool's mouth is his destruction. Fool says in his heart, there is no God. Blah, 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 blah. You shoot yourself in the foot. And his lips are the snare of his soul. Because you be, because what comes from you is your standard. You are your own standard. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of himself. 
A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. Okay? And see, you got to remember too, in Luke chapter 16, one verse, verse 15, Luke chapter 16, verse 15, just one verse. Uh, and he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. Self-theist. Atheists don't exist. But God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Okay? And 2 Corinthians... 2 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 10, verses 19 on to 23. What say I then? That the idol is anything? Or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? Context Paul is referring to like, uh, like, uh, like uh, a, a statue or, or uh, whatever, an object. But remember, idolatry is always an extension of the self who is their own idolater. You worship your little idol, it's because you want to worship that idol. The idol is always the extension of the one who is worshiping it. Hence, you are your own God. Every one of you, brethren, who ever encounter an atheist, so-called, don't be afraid. Don't fret man. Okay? If they take a gun out and shoot you, hey, you go home. Okay? Good. Don't be afraid of that. Whenever you encounter uh, one of these atheists, throw it at them. The time is short. The Titanic's sinking. As the Lord will, of course, don't take it upon yourself, but, you know, if you encounter an atheist and they're da 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 and, you know, call them on that immediately. Do it. Don't be afraid, because it's the truth. There is no such thing as an atheist. You're a self-theist. You're a Satanist, because there is no gray area. And see, y'all want that option C. Hey, there's Rome for you. Go to Rome. Okay? But I say, verse 20, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table. Thinking about you, Mr. Sunken Eye, and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Well, you, you know, easy believists and you <laughs> self-theists, you think you are. And here's the go-to for people who like to justify Roman Catholicism. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things that I not. And here in Revelation chapter 3 which is which is not chronological but <laughs> it's not funny <laughs> okay Revelation chapter 3 verses 14 on to verse 20 Laodicea and on to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, These things saith the Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. Okay, God said, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Word, capital W, made flesh. Okay? I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. 
Either or. There's no gray area, people. See, you self-theists self and all you other lost people, you want option C, D, E, F, G. It's an A or B equation. It's right or wrong. Okay? There is no option C. There is no gray area. You're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. You're either saved or you're lost. Okay, there is no option C. Okay? The Lord here is telling you, you don't want to believe that, that's, that's irrelevant. That is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Because when you stand before the very one that you have rejected, by, then you'll know. And then it's too late. And you want proof? Here it is. But see, you don't want it. And when you leave a 10-page dissertation on a video that hasn't even been up for 15 minutes, you're an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. Uh, go ahead and check out that video, okay? But the Lord's saying, I would thou wert cold or hot. Pick a side and stay on it. You said, well, I pick my own side. Okay, all right. You're on Satan's side. Okay? All right? You you don't want to, it's like, I don't believe in sin or God or the devil. But yeah, you're right. I like sin. You're of your father the devil. I, I don't say that. <laughs> That's what the scripture says. And see, again, I will give someone respect when you choose a side and stay on it. Okay? Well, I'm on my own side. Well, you are of your father the devil and you serve the Jesuit order. <laughs> Bravo. Okay? I respect the man. <laughs> Not greatly, but like I said, you know, Mr. Murphy, he, he, he plainly said, fine. Good for you. Roll it up, buddy. Have, have a little schnapps with it, too, and dip it in formaldehyde or whatever. Go ahead. Good. Good. Have fun. I'm not going to waste my time. That Emma Thorne, that was her name. You know, that Amma or Amma. <laughs> yeah. Aaron Ra guy. Crazy. I think that fine. <laughs> Go. I'm not going to bother with you. You know, what's, what's the point? Okay? You're your own God. You are your own standard. You've chosen. At least those people have the, at least the fortitude, okay? And that Aaron Ra guy, he's like, I don't want Jesus of Scripture. He said that. Not exactly like that, but he said that. He doesn't want, you know, Jesus. Fine. <laughs> go, go, you know, light it up, buddy. Go ahead. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your life, atheist. Because this is the best you're ever going to have. But see, with the Lord, it's like, I would rather you hot and cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, trying to find the gray area, the middle, and neither cold nor hot, well, I'm going to stay in the middle and just be, uh, you know, whatever. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Puke! You people who want the option C, <laughs> who want the gray area, well, I'm on nobody's side. Well, yes, you are. You're on Satan's side. Uh, you make God sick. And see, I know that doesn't bother you. I, I get that. I know that. But see, by the time it does bother you, and see, that's the thing. You guys are going to be reminded that you were warned. And that's going to make it even worse for you. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased in goods. Yeah, if you uh, bow down and worship me, all will be thine. That's what Satan offers you. He flashes the whale to you. In a moment of time, through the your cell phone and internet, you see all these guys in exotic uh, countries and great-looking places and 
Lost people look at that. It's like, oh, wow, my life stinks in comparison. Ah, hooked. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased in goods and have need of nothing. Yeah, because, yeah, hey, I'm my own guy, right? And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Because you are your own covering. Hence, you're naked. You're blind. You don't want to see. You're poor. Those riches you're not going to take with you. I counsel thee to buy of me gold try it, tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. And white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Now, this, this does not apply to anyone who is not saved. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. And Jesus is the door. Okay? Yes, atheist, you're right. God does not love you. He doesn't. God loved and gave. You want the love of God? You have to go his way, the way of the cross, which means death to self. Which is why so many people don't want it. Okay, uh, I'm just writing down links for the description box. And again, Mr. Self Theist, if you don't want to watch these uh, links or consider these things, then you can go to hell and roll up another one. Okay? All right? And the thing you got to remember, too, uh, you know, you self-theists should, at least, in the authorized version of the scriptures, okay, should consider the book of Ecclesiastes, King Solomon. King Solomon had riches and wealth beyond anything that the superficial fiat currency of wealth today can provide. He had genuine, real, I mean, he had gold in poundage, in tons. Okay, King Solomon could have done anything and he did. And at the end of the day, vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. Okay? King Solomon, he could have he could buy people. He could have bought nations. And anything that his little heart desired, he kept not from it. He wanted to see. He wanted to get in there. And who could do so more than him? He was king of Israel. One of, at the time, only two kings. Well, Rehoboam um, enjoyed it for a little while, but then the kingdom separated. So actually, only David and Solomon enjoyed a united Israel. The third, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, at his second coming, it's going to, you know, Israel is not going to be the northern and the southern kingdom again. Okay? But uh, out of the scriptures, the authorized version, read Ecclesiastes. Okay? Vanity of vanities, said the, uh, uh, said the Spirit. Uh, vanity of vanities, said the preacher. All is vanity. Excuse me. Okay? All right? Now, the question. The question that I've encountered, which this crazy old coot who doesn't want to hear the truth uh, brought up, one of them was the incest thing. How many of you have encountered this with these self-theists? They say, well, God promoted um, incest, but yet he's against it. And they're like, oh, God's a hypocrite. Uh, uh, what was our opening text today? Okay, uh, back to Proverbs 18. Okay, 
Uh, you guys, hey, again, guys, you self theists, you want an answer to this? You want to hear the answer? We'll answer it for you today, okay? Because you guys, Proverbs 18, verse 13. He that answereth the matter before he heareth it and is folly and shame unto him. But how many of you, brethren, sisters, you know, they bring up, isn't that weird? It's like the, the, the ham sin, that, that, that there was a sexual connotation to it. Which will be, <laughs> there was no, no sexuality at all with the sin of ham. There was none. None. That, that, that's, that's a very telling thing, you know, because they're all about flesh. But how many of you, I've, I've encountered that on many a time. It's like, well, God, you know, promoted incest, but yet he's against it. He's a hip. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Okay? Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Verses 26. On to 28. Okay, here's the here's your answer. You want to hear it? Then shut up and listen. Genesis chapter 1 from the authorized version. If you got <laughs> you're not watching, but hey, Mr. Murphy, have you gotten rid of that J-Ho thing yet? Huh? Okay, but come on, hold on. <clears throat> He's not watching. If you are. Hey, Mrs. Murphy, if you are watching me, go ahead and get a hold of me through an email. Okay, well, I'm not going to witness to you. I'm not. I'm not going to waste my time, but go ahead. Go ahead. I dare you to, tough guy. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 on to verse 28. Oh, and the, and the thing about the Trinity, there will be links in the uh, description box. Okay. Uh, anyway, we're not going to go off on that one. God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. There's another good example of this nonsensical Option C nonsense that you lost people. How many genders are there? There's only two, male and female. There's only two. Okay, male and female. Okay? But see, these perverts, yeah, uh, you know, they want that option C because they are their own gods. Okay? Yeah. You know, hey, if you, you know, like, I, I've witnessed to many sodomites before. I've, I've, I've given them many, you know, things, not me, but the Lord. I've given much information on the sodomites who have gotten a hold of me. Okay? <laughs> All right? You know, there is, there's only two genders, male or female. There's not this, oh, 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 what's that, other kin nonsense or pansexual, you know, the pan the devil kind of, it's just stupid just stupid i it's it's amusing when you see sodomites themselves get on it's like dude there's only two uh there's only two when you see sodomites themselves it's like that dude, there's only two genders what is this nonsense that that's funny okay but anyway so god created man in his own image and the image of god created he him Male and female created he them. What does that mean? You and I, I don't care who you are, you have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. I don't believe in a soul. Well, tough. You have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. God has a spirit, soul, and body. Okay, that's the th component of three. Not three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons that make one God. Because last time I checked, and I'm a high school dropout, uh, one plus one plus one equals three. Okay? And God blessed them. 
And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, uh, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the waters. And this crazy old nitwit is like, go for, uh, uh, be fruitful and multiply. And he's like, well, incest. Hmm. This is true. This is true. Genesis chapter 4. Now see, what's going on here for you people to understand, and lost people won't, but here's the answer. The Garden of Eden is what is called a dispensation, a period of time allotted in history. And during those periods of time, there are seven of them. Uh, salvation, how one is made right with God, changes within the dispensation. Okay, Scripturally, it's rightly dividing the word of truth. You can refer to it as an age or dispensation. Okay? Okay? This is the very first. Genesis means beginning. The Garden of Eden was the very first dispensation in Scripture. During the Garden of Eden, and this is where these crazy, uh, heretic, easy believing, believest people like to come in. During the Garden of Eden, it was all works. They had to do something. God said, don't eat of the tree. He didn't say you couldn't touch it. He said, don't eat it. Guess what? They ate out of it. They ate the tree. Okay. The actual what the fruit was or whatever it was is insignificant to the fact that they did contrary to what God said. And in Genesis chapter 3, Satan, Lucifer, that old, that old dragon, the serpent, the devil, Satan, okay, he went to Eve, the woman, and the woman was created for Adam, not Adam for Eve and not for Steve, okay? Satan went to the woman and said to her, Yea, hath God said, question what God said. And then later on said, Oh, you, you will not surely die, for God doth know, and the day ye eat thereof, meaning the day you do contrary to what God says, your eyes will be open, and atheist, ye shall be as gods, knowing good. Okay, and then an animal died to cover them, and then they got booted out of the Garden of Eden. That was the end of the very first dispensation in Scripture. Okay, it was all works. Do not believe these lying, free grace, easy believism heretics that tell you that it was by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. They are lying and they are stupid. Okay, tell them I said so. All right? But when you get to Genesis chapter 4, now here's the thing. In Genesis chapter 1, we saw where God said, what? Be fruitful and multiply and, rep and replenish the earth. Scripturally speaking, you have no evidence of Adam and Eve procreating until Genesis chapter 4. You have, I mean, you can say, well, maybe they did, what, whatever. Scripturally speaking, you can't prove that. You cannot prove in Genesis 1, 2, and 3 that Adam and Eve at all procreated. You cannot. There is no scriptural evidence to support it. None. Contrary, Genesis 4, 1. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. So Genesis 4.1 shows us when Adam and Eve procreated. Okay? Had copulation. All right? You do not see that anywhere in Genesis 1, 2, and 3. You can say, well, it's suggested. It, show it to me. In Genesis 1, 2, or 3. Show it to me. Show it to me. It's like with this ridiculous gap theory thing. Okay? The, the stupid, uh, you know, millions and billions of years between Genesis 1 or whatever. Uh, it, it's stupid. There is no scriptural evidence to suggest at all 
that Adam and Eve procreated before Genesis 4, 1. And see, that's significant because in the Garden of Eden, the very first dispensation, there was none of that until they got booted out. Okay? That's very significant. Okay, and now go to Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 5. This is the book of the generations of Adam. Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Yes, man was created sinless. Yes, he was. Yes, you can make a valid argument that man was created to be vegan. You can make that very valid argument. Yes, you can. That's different now. What happened? The dispensation changed. The way they were made right with God in the Garden of Eden is not how they are made right within this dispensation, the patriarchal period. Okay? The patriarchal period. See, within the dispensations... Salvation, or how one is made right with God, changes. Okay? You got these stupid Christians, and I'm being polite, who don't know, don't want to know, and say it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. And an atheist comes around and looks at that, and they, they it's, like, it's like the perfect example. God loves you, right? But how can a loving God do all this in Deuteronomy... And yet say, God loves you. And they go to John 3.16, right? The uh, self-theist, uh, and even the Muslim, will be like, uh, wait a minute, time out, that don't make sense. You're right, it doesn't. You're right, it doesn't. Why? Because Christianity does not rightly divide the word of truth. There are those who do. They have that going for them at least. Okay? But see, this is an imperative thing. If you were to rightly divide the word of truth, a lot of your stupid little arguments would be answered. Okay? Alright? Verse 2. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day when they were created. Now, I have heard that Adam means one that uh, is red in the face, meaning to blush. Okay, uh, whatever, okay, whatever. There are those who say that Adam was a black man. There are those who say that Adam was a white man with blonde hair. But there's no evidence to support that. None. Okay. And we're going to see that actually the contrary to that suggests that Adam was not black, was not white, but was rather... Some, uh, something other but black or white. Okay? And that doesn't mean that uh, credence to have a gray area. Okay? You have to remember that. Alright? But let's keep reading. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he begat, had begotten Seth were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he, and he died. I, excuse me, excuse me. I beg your pardon, my stepson came over, uh, uh, so that's you heard, you might have heard the dog barking in the background, that's... That's why I was like, wait a minute, my stepson was here. So, Anyway, in Genesis chapter 5, what I'd like us to concentrate on is verses 4 and 5. Okay? God said in Genesis chapter 1, be fruitful and multiply. And like we said, in Genesis 1, 2, and 3, there is no evidence whatsoever to suggest that Adam and Eve procreated. None. It's after the expulsion from the Garden of Eden, this, uh, not this dispensation, but the dispensation changed, the dispensation of the patriarchs. And right here, 
And the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. All the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. That's very significant to remember. Why? Number one, this is before the flood. Why is that significant? Because before the flood, the world was very different. Dude lived almost to be a thousand years old. Okay? There's a time limit on the age of man today. 120 years. Okay? That's, you know, that's it. And that was something that happened gradually. You read the genealogies in the book of Genesis. Uh, people started the, their length of days started dwindling, dwindling. Like from 900 to 500 to 400 to uh, barely 200 and stuff like that, okay? It was a gradual process. This is before the flood. Everything was different. The landscape was different. There's evidence to suggest that even oxygen was more pure, uh, trees were bigger, dinosaurs were around, and that kind of stuff. It was a totally different environment before the flood. Also, were they marrying uh, brothers and sisters? Yes. But the gene pool was far more pure than it is, say, today. Look at the Habsburgs with the chin and the defects with people or with incestual... Oh, oh, the Whitakers. The Whitakers from that weirdo guy, um, Soft White Underbelly, where he did that video about the Whitakers and the incestual um, children there, where they're all deformed and have these defects. Okay, back in this dispensation before the flood... The gene pool was a lot purer than any gene pool today. So the allotment to have a relation between brother and sister was different because the gene pool was pure. Okay? This is a different dispensation. And also, too, you've got to remember, hey, self-theist, this is the book of Genesis. You know your Leviticus 18 that you like to go to? Uh, that's after what? After Genesis and Exodus, isn't it? Even you guys can figure that out. Okay? This is the dispensation right here after the Garden of Eden, the dispensation of the patriarchs. Okay? And right here, this is before the flood. Yes! Yes, there was incestual relations going on. The gene pool was pure. The population of the earth was happening then. Okay? Yes. Yes, you're right. And see, the law was not written then. Hence, population, copulation, population, that kind of thing was going on. Okay? The gene pool was pure. Far more pure than it is today. Okay? That's how it was worked. Yes. Yes. In this dispensation. Okay? But then you get to Genesis chapter 7, right? And see, these guys are like, well, in Leviticus, uh, Leviticus 18. In the dispensation under the law. Not the dispensation of the patriarchs. See, see dude, here's your problem. You're not saved, one. And number two, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth. And you might, well, that's a whatever excuse. That, that's the truth. That's the truth. Things change in the dispensations. You're not made right the way you were made right during the Garden of Eden. You're not made right today as you were during the patriarchal period. Okay? During the dispensation, salvation, how one is made right, with God changes. Okay. Okay, are you with me? That's that's a, there will be links for you to consider these things, to go over these things. If you don't want to do that, be disputatious, go to hell. Go to hell and roll you up another one. Go right ahead. Okay? Genesis chapter seven, verses seven on to verse seventeen now. Okay? 
And Noah, now this is the flood. And the flood changed the landscape in everything. Okay, that, that, you know, the Grand Canyon was not formed over millions and millions of years. That happened muy rápido. Okay, Mount Everest, well, I don't believe, was around before the flood. Okay, people have asked that. It's like, well, what about Mount Everest for, around the flood? I personally believe that Mount Everest was not there before the flood. I don't. I don't think it was. Okay, I don't. I believe the flood, verified through scripture, number one, created the Grand Canyon, muy rápido, and the plates smashing together because the waters came out of the earth and into the atmosphere, okay? Those caused the mountains that we have today, okay? And incidentally, uh, the continents are connected. You know, the deep oceans do have a bottom, okay, Mr. <laughs> Brilliant Genius. Uh, the continents are connected. You don't believe the con continents were ever connected or whatever their argument is? It's like, Mr. Atheist, brilliant guy, and you call me crazy. Um, they're connected. <laughs> All the continents are connected, people, okay? They're not... <laughs> People actually believe this. They're not like floating on the surface of the water. They're connected. There's a bottom to the oceans. Genius. Okay? <laughs> All right? Come on, man. You're the educated people. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Genesis chapter 7, verses 7 on to verse 17. Noah went in, and his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Four guys and four women. Okay? There were no other people, persons, spirits, and body on the ark besides Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Noah's wife, Shem, Ham, Japheth, and their wives. Okay? All right. Don't trust that stupid movie that had the gladiator in it, Noah, which was disgusting. And it had the chick from uh, uh, Harry Potter in it. Don't that, that's that, 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 that. Okay? There was no other persons on there except Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives. Okay? All right? Of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls and everything that creepeth upon the earth. Uh, genius, obviously there were no fish, because the waters of the flood, hello, uh, insects and stuff like that, they could fly around and land on the animals and stuff like that, okay? Not none of that stuff, okay? There went in two and two onto Noah into the ark, the male and his female, as God had commanded Noah. There's only two genders, people. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open. And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. Now, see, a lot of people like to say, well, there must have been a lot. Yeah, there was a lot of rain, but remember, the fountains of the deep psst, broke open. Water jetted out from the earth, okay? Like, poof, went up into the atmosphere, all right? It's like, well, where did the water of the flood go? It's still here on the earth, okay? All right? Anyway, let's continue. And the self same day entered Noah and Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. Right there, verse 13 tells you, those were the only persons, spirit, soul, and body, made in the image of God, who went on the ark. Okay? They and every beast after his kind and all the cattle after their kind, 
and every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in, male and female, of all flesh. There's one flesh of man, there's a flesh of birds, there's a flesh of fishies, okay? As God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bear up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. Okay? Now, go to Genesis chapter 9. Everybody else died. Yes. Yes. And the earth itself was not destroyed. Just covered. Okay? This is still the first earth. You read Revelation chapter 22, I believe that is. Uh, you know, the first earth was destroyed, okay? We're still on the first earth, okay? The second earth comes with, you know, and uh, actually, instead of just doing that, Let's go, let me show you. Uh, here's the, here's where you go to disprove the ridiculous gap theory. Okay, here's an easy one for these people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Genesis, uh, Genesis, Revelation 21. Verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. What does that mean? We're still on the first earth. Unless, of course, you know, Revelation isn't chronological. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Anyway. Yes, we are still on the first earth. Gap theory. <clears throat> out of the water. Stupid. We're on the first earth. Still. This is still the first earth. Okay. All right. Genesis chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 7. Now, as we saw, okay, there was only Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, eight persons, spirit, soul, and body, okay, on the ark. Okay? All right. So, God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. There you go, you old coot. Yes. Okay, still the dispensation of the patriarchs. Everything changed with the flood, though. The atmosphere changed. Everything. The landscape. There were mountains. There was Mount Arat now. Okay. Was that there before the flood? I doubt it. I mean, that's, but whatever. Everything changed with the flood. The atmosphere uh, the ecosystems, everything changed with the flood. Okay? Grapes and ham sin, that will be in the description box for you. Okay? Grapes uh, fermented quicker now after the flood. Hence, Noah got drunk. Okay? We're not going to get into that. Okay? But it was just Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Yes. So, what was going on? Cousins, I believe they call it, right? Nephews and not, whatever, were marrying and to what? Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Okay? Again, the gene pool was still more pure than anything that we got today. And hey, this is the book of Genesis, right? You guys like to go to Leviticus? Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Common sense alone, okay, there's Genesis, Exodus, okay. Something happened, something changed, okay. This is still the patriarchal period. Because even though the landscape changed, <coughs> man was still made right in a certain way in this dispensation, okay. Differing from the Garden of Eden, and differing vastly from under the law, okay? The way someone was made right during this dispensation did not change with the flood. What changed was the entire world and its makeup. 
Okay? That's what changed. How one was made right with God during this dispensation did not change with Noah. That's why you do not count the flood as a change in the dispensation. Because they were still made right the same way. Okay? That, that's, that's simple. Okay? And the fear of you, reading verse 2, and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea, into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. You can eat meat now. Okay? But flesh with the blood thereof, Catholic, and this is in three dispensations. The patriarchal period, under the law, and in the current dispensation. Yeah, hey Catholic, you're not supposed to drink blood. Okay, and you Catholics with your Jesuit priest, you know, the abracadabra. Woody woody, they take the the uh, the bale cookie and make it flesh and the wine become blood. You're crazy, okay? But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, ye shall not eat. And surely your blood, uh, surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. At the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man, spirit, soul, and body. And you. And you, we're reading verse 7, be fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. There it is twice. Be fruitful and multiply. In another dispensation, the patriarchal period, the gene pool was far more pure and the law had yet to be given. Yes. At first, before the flood, yeah, marrying brothers and sisters. The gene pool was pure. It was before the flood. After the flood, cousins or whatever they, whatever the thing is. Yes, they were intermarrying. The gene pool was purer then. A lot purer. Okay, and all these defilements and all this sin, okay, hadn't brought in. And all these uh, mingling with other, uh, what you know, of the kindreds. Okay? Hey! Shem with Shem. Japheth with Japheth. Ham with Ham. Simple. Okay? Some of these guys get a little too uh, nitpicky about that. Okay? If you keep, uh, you know, for example, Chinese and Japanese. Yeah, there are differences because the gene pool has long been diluted. But they're Shem, okay? They're Shem. They're Shemitic. Chinese and Japanese, Korean, Thailand, they're, they're Shemitic. They are Shemitic. Okay? They're Shemitic. Egyptian, African. You're Shemitic. You're, you're Hemetic. Hemetic. There you go. Okay? <laughs> Englishman, Frenchwoman. I know you two, French and English, you like hate each other, whatever. You're Japheth. You're Japhethian. Okay? Okay? Oh, and also the American Indian. Okay? The American Indian. Shem. The Aztecs, I believe, were Hamites. With the, you know, the uh, pyramids. Egyptians were Hamitic, okay? And I personally believe that the beloved Hispanic is a mixture of Japheth and Ham. Because what happened to the, the Aztecs? My kindred, the Spaniards, the conquistadores, came over and they procreated and whatnot, okay? That's my personal belief on that, all right? But simple. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Simple. Now go to Genesis chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10. 
Verse one, just one verse. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, the Asiatics. Ham, the Africans. And Japheth, the Europeans. Okay? And unto them were sons born after the flood. Okay? Now, there was intermingling there. Yes, there was. There were brothers and sisters being married. Yes, there was. Okay? To replenish. The gene pool was still pure. The written law was not yet given. Okay? That's what you guys are arguing. It's like, God's a hypocrite. You need to understand. Okay? It was not written yet. He, the replenishing of the earth, the gene pool was pure. It's not <laughs> nothing. See, you're comparing what is today to something that was of yesterday in a different dispensation and making yourselves look stupid. Okay? You don't know what you're talking about. Okay? You, you want to attack my father, the scriptures? I take issue with that. This is your answer. Okay? If you don't want to hear it, that's your problem. Now, what would happen here? Okay? What would happen here? Look now at Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Okay? Shem is the Asiatics. Ham are the Africans. Okay? Or of the African territory or whatever. Okay? Japheth are the Europeans. Okay? Simple. Simple. Okay? Japheth with Japheth, Ham with Ham, Shem with Shem. Okay? Simple. That's a kind of variety. When you start, you know, like the Tower of Babel or Babel, uh, Babel, uh, and you start coming together all as one, you dilute everything. And hence, look at the dilutions of the bloodline. There is no such thing today as a pure-blooded... There was this one little devil, his name... I'm not even going to say his name because he's a little wimp, but was like calling people mud blood. And what, uh, dude, the, the gene pool of today has been so mixed and diluted. Okay, that doesn't give you credence for you to be of Ham and for you, sh you know, to go to Shem. Okay, I'm against that. You have enough. We have enough variety within our own kindred. We do, we do. Okay, there's a whole lot of variety in Japheth. There's a whole lot of variety in Shem. There's a whole lot of variety in Ham. Okay, <laughs> what? Shut up. Okay. Stay within your kindred. Beautiful. Lovely. Even even the black Hebrew Israelites get that one right. Okay, it's like, hey, you know, we're staying with our own stuff. But then again, they think they're Hebrews, and they're not. You're not. Genesis 12, verses 1 on verse 5. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, unto Abram, excuse me, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. Canaan linked with Ham. Okay? Okay? Now, what is so significant about this? you got to remember. Okay? And this, this is where you black Hebrew Israelites, you uh, Brizraelites, British Hebrew Israelites, okay? What you guys, what you devils do, 
you guys, you black Hebrew Israelites who are descent of Ham, saying that you guys are the actual Hebrews. You guys in England, who's like, no, we are actual Hebrews, okay? Okay, you black Hebrew Israelites, your descent is of Ham. You Brizraelites, your descent is of Japheth, okay? Even if you were of Shem, like the Chinese and Japanese, uh, still, what happened? First of all, let's establish one fact that you guys don't like to admit. Genesis 11, one verse. Genesis 11, verse 10. These are the generations of Shem. The Asiatics. Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begot Arphaxad two years after the flood. Verse 11. And Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad, 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 500 years and begat sons and daughters. Okay? 500 years as opposed, as opposed to Adam before the flood, almost a thousand. That timeline, life was dwindling down. Okay? The atmosphere changed because of the flood. Shem. Asiatics. Okay? Why is this significant? Verse 27 in Genesis 11. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat, there he is, Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begat, begat Lot. Why is that significant? Why are you, it's like, why are you up uh, Genesis 14, 13. Genesis 14, 13. In Scripture, usually when you see a word first mentioned, usually it defines it. Okay? It's referred to as the law of first mention. No, law of first mention is not written in Scripture. No, it's a common sense thing that a lot of devils don't seem to have. Significance. Black Hebrew Israelite. British Hebrew Israelite. A Hamite claiming to be a Hebrew. A Japhethite claiming to be a Hebrew. Here's your problem. I just showed you. We just saw. Abram came out of Shem. You just saw it. God in Genesis 12 told Abram, get out from thy kindred. Separate thyself from the kindred of Shem. Why? Genesis 14, 13. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew. Don't look at me, boy. Look at the scripture. Look at the scripture. Look at the verse. Don't look at me. For he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorites, brother of Eshcol, and brother of Anir. And these were confederate with Abram. Who would become Abraham? That's a significant lie, because that's the very first mention of the word Hebrew. The Hebrews come from Shem. Not Japheth, not Ham. And what, what, what about the Chinese and Japanese? Okay, Abram was taken out of Shem to establish the Hebraic line. The fathers, Abraham and Isaac thy seed shall be called, and Jacob. From which the Hebraic line Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Look, Hamite, look, Japhethite, 
You're not a Hebrew. It's impossible. Because the Hebraic people came out of Shem to be established to bring Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, eventually. God manifests in the flesh. The people of Israel, which you Hamites are not, which us Japhethites are not. Okay? Your, your, your ridiculous arguments are blown out of the water. You're not a Hebrew. You're not. Take fence and the gate. But see now, okay, now go to Exodus chapter, excuse me, 12. Okay? The patriarchal period was just that, to establish the patriarchs of the Hebraic people. To whence... Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Would come. Is it not evident that our Lord sprang from Judah of the Hebraic people? Okay? The Hebrews came out of Shem. They are Shemitic, but yet they're Hebrew because Hebrew called out. See? Hebrew. Abram was called out of his kindred. Hebrew, come out. Okay? But see, now what happens? See, the, the, the patriarchal period, that dispensation ended how? Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 10. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, who were Hebrews, okay? Not Hamites, not Japhethites, okay? And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house Take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood. Okay, the, the symbolism of the cross is there. But remember, they were not looking forward to the cross during this dispensation. They weren't. There were symbols of it with the, the ark and the Passover lamb, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? But these people were not looking forward to the cross, okay? Remember that. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post. There's the significance, the symbolism of the cross. Okay? Okay? But they were not looking forward to it. Because if they were looking forward to it, why would Peter have said, Lord, this, is not, this shouldn't become you. Well, he was just lonely. No, 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 no. No, he just didn't want him to go. No, it was expedient for the Lord to go away. Okay? To die for sins according to the scripture. Bury and rise again the third day, according to the scripture. If they were looking forward to the cross, they would have been like, "This, I don't want this, but Lord, this is what you got to do. Okay? They were not looking forward to the cross. Don't believe that lie. Okay? And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. That which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn it with fire. Why is this significant? Because this is when the dispensation changed unto the giving of the law. The children coming out of Egypt. The dispensation of the patriarchs ended with the Passover. And the 
Passover brought in the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works. Okay? What, this is explained for you in detail in several videos. You don't want to watch them. That's on you. Then shut up and go away because you don't want to hear it. Okay? Well, while we're here, go to Exodus. Uh, uh, while we're here in chapter 12, look at verses 40 on to verse 42. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them from out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed for all the children of Israel in their generations. Now, is this a requirement for today for, today for the Hebraic people salvifically? No. Should they, though? Yes, I believe they should. Is it today a requirement for salvation to be right with God? No. Why? Because the way someone is made right with God, saved in a dispensation, changes. And right there shows you that they went from the Garden of Eden, changed the expulsion from the Garden, okay? The, the, the uh, patriarchal period ended right there. Because what would happen? Exodus chapter 20, the Ten Commandments, the actual writing with God wrote with his finger, okay? The giving of the law, the dispensation changed. And under the law, see, see, okay? There's, there's the answer to your argument. Yes, there was incestual relations uh, before the giving of the law. Yes. In different dispensations. Yes, when the gene pool was pure. After the giving of the law, or during the giving of the law. Okay? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus 18. Okay? Now it is written. Now it is written. Okay? Now it is written. God is not a hypocrite. No, he isn't. The dispensation changed. Okay? The gene pool by this time, amongst others than the called out of Shem Hebraic people, the gene pool was starting to get tainted. More so than immediately after the flood with Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Excuse me. Okay? Now, here's your Leviticus 18. Verses 1 on to verse 9. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Now, the dis this is the dispensation of the law. The patriarchal period has is over. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has been established. The Hebraic bloodline, the Hebraic people, okay, taken from Shem. Not Ham or Japheth. Has been established. Okay? Unto the Hebraic Jews. We're given the oracles of the law. You read about that in uh, um, Romans chapter 3. Okay? Okay? The law and the ordinances, the oracles, were given unto the Hebraic Jews. And I showed you. Hebrew is equated with Abraham. Abram, who would become Abraham. Not Ham or Japheth. But Abram came from Shem. You understand? You do. You just don't want to accept it. And that's your fault. <clears throat> and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After Now, instruction and righteousness, the saint for today, we look at this, put on the new man. Okay? Today, our instruction in righteousness, God called us out of Egypt, our past life, and is bringing us onto the promised land himself. Okay? That's the instruction. That's how you apply it, instruction in righteousness for us today, the same. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. 
and after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do, neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments, and keep mine ordinances, to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him, to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. Now, during this dispensation of the law, it was okay uh, before the flood, okay, in the, uh, you know, before the flood, during the patriarchal period, okay? Before the flood, the gene pool was very pure. After the flood, it was still pure. But given time, given time, okay, the mixing, the diluting started to happen. Okay? And God, see, in the dispensation, things change. How man was made right with God during this dispensation changed. God himself did not change. How man is made right with God, saved, that's what changed. That's why this is here. It's not a contradiction. It's not a hidden God being a hypocrite. God forbid. The gene pool was, at this time, quite diluted. Okay? Today, look at the Habsburgs. I rest my cake. The Whitakers. Bless their hearts and souls. And I don't mean that in the southern way. Okay? A soft white uh, underbelly. You, you guys have got to have heard of that one. Okay? But let's continue. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him, to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover their na her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or daughter of thy mother, which daughter, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, and you can keep reading on and on. Why, though? Why this? Oh, look at verses 24 now on to verse 30. <laughs> you atheists, so, excuse me, you satanic self-theists, like to come here to point out a contradiction. There ain't no contradiction. Verses 24 and verse 30. Defile not ye yourselves, ye is plural. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. For in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. Gene Pool has been messed up by this time. Okay? That the land spew not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep my ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. Okay? Now, look at Deuteronomy chapter 4. Why, why, why all of this? Why all of this? Well, as today, the saints, the church of the living God, we are called to be ambassadors for Christ and to come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, that we may be God's ambassadors. Okay? Which Christianity ain't. That same principle was there under the law, but relegated to specifically Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 10. Why did, why did God do that with Israel? 
Same reason why with the body of Christ today. To be ambassadors. For who? The Lord. Okay. Today, salvifically, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Male or female. But wait a minute. There are male and female. There are Hebraic people and Gentile people. See, salvation changed. This dispensation. Okay? Things change in the dispensation, dear friend. I know you don't get that because you're lost. But that's the answer to it. That's the answer. You don't want to accept that. Thing. Go roll up another one. Take a long walk off a short period. You don't want to accept that. That's your problem. This is the answer. And there is no contradiction. Only in your own mind because you are your own God. Now therefore, verses 1 on verse 10, and then we'll be done. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. The fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor, for all the men that followed Baal Peor, ba Baal Peor, two syllables, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land where that ye go to possess it. Why? To be an example. Keep reading. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. Today, the body of Christ are Christ's ambassador. Okay? We represent Jesus Christ. Christianity does not. Okay? Same principle, different dispensation. Okay? Your wisdom and your understanding. Okay? Keeping the law. Alright? Which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. They were to be God's ambassadors, as the body of Christ is today. Okay? For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Dispensational difference keeping their soul diligently because under the law there was no eternal security. Once saved, always saved, by grace through faith, was not under the law. Okay? Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Yes, father and mother ought to be the ones teaching children. Not Jesuits! Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live, that they shall live upon the earth, and they and that they may teach their children. Okay? So Yes. Yes. Yes, there was incestual relations. Okay. In the patriarchal period. The patriarchal period began with the expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Okay. Before the flood, the gene pool was very pure. After the flood, it was still pure. But the going forth and multiplying, okay, all right, and Abram was called out of Shem 
to establish the Hebraic line which where Jesus Christ is come in the flesh would come, okay? The mixing and diluting the Tower of Babel or Babel, whatever, everyone, hey, everybody, let's make ourselves towers and whatever, okay? Nimrod, the Babylonian religion, which is modern Catholicism, okay? And under the law, now, under the law, that dispensation, yes, God said, don't do that because the gene pool has been corrupted back then. And today, you just look at the dear, sweet Whitakers from Soft White Underbelly. I might try to find that and put that in the description box. I might, I might, I might not, uh, I might not, uh, that guy's whatever, but gene pool by the giving of the law was already diluted and Israel was commanded to stay within its own boundaries its own kindred because Jesus Christ is come in the flesh would come from Israel and they they were given prophecies that it would be from Judah but still they they needed to be separate okay that is the answer to your question Okay? Dear saints, don't you don't have to all you gotta say simply it's like yeah the gene pool is different and the dispensation changed. Okay, you don't have to be afraid of that question. Okay, I've encountered that on so many things, on so many occasions. Okay? Here you go. Alright? Hey, self theist, you don't want to hear that? You don't want to believe it, that's your problem. This is absolute truth, the authorized version of the scriptures. You don't want to believe it, that's your problem. Okay? So, roll up another one there, self-theist. You don't exist. You are your own God. So, thank you so much for watching this, if you do. Unto the saints, the brethren, the church of the living God, which is the pillar and ground of the truth, I love you. Please keep us in your prayers. As we pray for so many of you. We will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.